can we expect to see the team play in a similar style with you as coach? Yeah, of course. I think um, not, not much will change. You know, we worked on a lot of stuff on the preseason, so it's just continuously building on that. And we've got a style that we want to play. So, and again, we're looking forward to tomorrow to, to continue building and working and, and hopefully picking up another three points. In your own words, how would you describe that style? Uh, I think it's just a typical city city sort of brand of football. You know, we want to we want to dominate the game with and without the ball. We obviously, oh, as, me as a coach, I, I want the ball. When I, when I, when we don't have the ball, then it's then I suffer, and I think the team does too. So that's sort of what we've instilled that you know we want to maintain possession and we and we don't want to just pass it around the back for the sake of passing it around back. So we want to have dangerous possession where we're you know in the front third, constantly applying pressure. And then when we don't have it, then we're, we're hunting to, to win the ball back. Fantastic. So I guess formation-wise, round one, uh, team sheet set a back three, but it, it looked like a, a back four. Are you able to give us any indication about how you might line up formation-wise tomorrow and if the, the potential reintroduction of Emma Chaker changes that somewhat? Um, I think that's the, that's the beauty of our squad and the quality of the players that we have, that we are flexible and, and a lot that were here last season were in that back five or back three. So um, we've got that flexibility now where we can analyse the opponents and see what will be best suited. So I won't give away today what's, um, what we have for tomorrow, but the one thing I'll say is that we are flexible, that we can play with a four, we can go f with a three, and then maybe we can even change the midfield or the front line. So, and that's just a credit to the players that they're, they're capable to, no matter how we apply, that we can still apply the same principles in our, in our football philosophy. How do you plan to deal with Brisbane's strengths? Obviously, they're a very transitional team. They're very good on the, on the counter. Is there anything specific that, that you need to tweak or is it just all focused on, on the way that you play? Uh, a lot of it's focused on the way that we play. So especially, I think, early in the season, we need, a, we need to focus a lot on ourselves and, and continuously keep building because it still is very early. We've had a you know, three, four week preseason some ladies coming in a little bit later, so that, you know we're all getting that understanding. But you know, of, of course, we'll we'll look at Raw, and we know they have some dangerous players. And like you like you mentioned, in transition, they are very good with the with the quality they have up front. So you know, we'll we'll, we'll look at their qualities. We'll also look at where where they where we see that they're a bit weaker, and we'll try to target that as well. So I think it shapes up for a, for a great game tomorrow. still have to wait for for today's session so hers is sort of i wouldn't say a day today but we we monitor her and everyone else day today so we'll see again today's session see how she pulls through it we'll speak to her after and, and if there's nothing then she'll be definitely up for selection tomorrow awesome and just finally i wanted to ask you about young daniela gallich everyone i've spoken to around the place ranks her very very highly at such a young age can we expect to see her continue to get regular minutes throughout the season uh, the one thing I'll tell you, she's starting tomorrow. So, sure, she's starting, she's playing, and I'm, I'm with you on that. That I'm very excited about her, and you know, she's an excellent player at 16 years old. And you know, it doesn't matter how old or how young you are, if you if you perform and you play well, and she certainly has. And and now again tomorrow, she gets another chance. It's great for Australian football. Thanks, 100. percent She's a. I think you know, all of Australia should be very excited about her. Cheers, mate. Thank you. So one of the things uh, last season was, unfortunately, was Sally James' injury. We saw a lot of Melissa Barbieri. Um, Sally James started in Wellington. Is it going to be the same thing? Is it going to be Sally James' net to lose this year? Um, look, I think so, yeah. You know, I think for every player in the squad, when you when you play, you know, it's it's you've got competition breathing down your neck and the ones that are, that are on the bench or not involved, you know, they're training hard and they're pushing, so... I think that's, that's that's an excellent thing to have as a coach. It's a it's a headache, but it's a, it's a very good headache to have that you know that you know we've got quality people are pushing each other and and the and the levels been unbelievable at training. So I've got to credit the the ladies. They've been unreal and everyone's fighting. Everyone's putting their hand up. So again, tomorrow we'll we'll put out what we believe at this moment is the is the is the one that can do the job. And then um, and I think yeah, Sally she'll 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 also start tomorrow. You've got a number of young players. Uh, Taryn mentioned Danielle Gallage. You've got Riley Henry. Um, you know, and a couple of others. I guess in regards to the development of these players, is there going to be a season plan that's being followed, or is it being assessed on a week-to-week -week basis? 
Look, I think in, in football, it, it needs to be almost a day-to-day -day basis, like take, take myself in um, assistant and then pretty much overnight I'll become the interim head coach. So, you know, football, I, I've learned throughout my career and I'm learning now through, through as a coach or on the other side of the, of the white line that things can change very, very quickly. So it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to plan too far ahead and to say, okay, this is the optimal path that we want to take, so to speak. But, you know, football, it can change overnight, you know. So I think my, my only wish is that they're all healthy, they all stay injury free. And as long as that happens, then, then we could potentially, because they are young, especially, especially Danny, she's young and she's one that needs, you know, to be taken care of. But at the moment, she's, she's flying, she's playing well. And, and you know, she, she doesn't look like a 16 year old when she crosses that line. Yeah, um, obviously it, it's an interim role, um, your, your tenure as head coach, but you finally got that opportunity to um, to, to step into the main role. Um, you, you're taking over from your dad. I guess, how much have you learned from your dad and with this particular setup in particular, because obviously, you know, Rado's built this squad, Rado's built the game plan, I guess, is, like, is there anything that you're adding to yourself or is it basically just following uh, your dad's game plan um, this season? Uh, early on, we won't change too much because I think, you know, like I said, with a with a shorter preseason, it's hard now to throw everything out the window. And, and our, our our ways of playing football and our thoughts are very similar. So so that's why I was, you know, wanted to be here as an assistant and to to learn, especially being a young coach and just just starting. So it was important to to learn not just from that basis, but also you know you work very closely with physios, with strength and conditioning, and you learn about you know as much as on the pitch, you learn a lot off the pitch as well. So. But again, now it's again different now. Now it's right into the, into the mixer, into the deep end, so to speak, and and just yeah, looking forward to it to continuously learn and 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 yeah, just learn every day, really. And what, while you're in this role this season, is are, are there any particular goals that you have personally? Um, again, I think just to to learn I, I know I'll make mistakes like any player we and, and I think that's that's where you learn the most when when mistakes are made and when there's tougher games and you know so I think and especially with the quality of coaches in the league very experienced so there's definitely always going to be something to learn every every match day every training day but as a my mentality is always we want to win so you know the, the trophies are there to be won that's why we play so our intentions are set we, we're, we're going title hunting and you, you Playing, um, playing out of Caseyfield this week, you've got a lot of games, you know, out there. How important is it going to be to turn the to turn the training base and you know the fields that you guys have essentially into a fortress when teams come to visit? That they're going to be not not scared, but they're going to have to be wary that you guys will play at your best at Caseyfield. Yeah, so it's it's not the field that we train on, so we train on a different field, but it is in the same complex. So I think you know there's a comfort of arriving, you know the place very well. And we've had a couple of friendly games in the preseason there, so there's the familiarity from from being there already. And again, it's a it's a home game, so whenever we're at home, we hope that a lot of our fans come out and help. And I think you know the girls are deserving of that. They they play some exciting football, and and we want to be a joy to watch as well. So we want to try to win, but we want to do it in a in a nice way for fans, where they can come out and and the girls can really show their qualities and play football and. And that's what we'll try to do on Saturday. So, again, like we said, it's the opening game for us at home. So, best foot forward, and we want to we want to keep challenging and go back to the top of the table. Uh, I think that's all for me. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey Jonathan, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, you, you mentioned that you're not looking to, in terms of, I guess, the the style of play, you're not looking to to change too much at the moment. Um, for, I guess more individually for yourself, in terms of your um, your coaching personality perhaps, or your coaching style, um, how would you compare that to, to your father's? Uh, very similar, so um, I was always a, a big fan, even back back in the day, I think even when Pep was um, the Barcelona B coach, it was something as a player that you know, I was following them along and, and that sort of brand of football really really stuck with me and as a, and as a player I was always I wanted the ball when we when I, when we didn't have the ball. I'd be sprinting, pressing, trying to win it because I, I feel like I suffer when I don't have it, and, it, and it's not as it's not as enjoyable. So when you dominate possession and you have the ball, it's 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 so enjoyable. So I think as a player, it's sort of now moved into the same as a coaching. So it's been a been a long sort of 
10, 15 years of, you know, really appreciating that style and that, that Barcelona team and now the Manchester City team and, and the ones that want that possession, want to play at the back, you know, want to win the ball. So I think that's, that's, a, that's a style that resonates with me and that's, that's one that I'd like to bring as a, as a coach as well. Rihanna spoke about um, you bringing in a, a, a perspective, having had that playing experience. Um, can you sort of speak to what that sort of looks like um, in, in practice? Oh, look, I think in regardless what the practice is, it's whether it starts with a with a passing drill or possession, or if we're in our tactical, there's there's always something you know with my I think 15 odd years professional, you know that I've I've learnt through through those times where it's no that even a simple passing practice it, it means a lot more. So whether it's a marker or a mannequin or, or whatever it may be, you know you have to always pretend that's a defender. So then every pass is important, every movement is important, and so it's just probably that that very little minor not minor probably small details that that could make a big difference so just trying to pass on as much knowledge as a as an ex-player to, to the um, to the ladies and but again they've got a lot of quality so wherever I can help them a little bit as a group and as individuals I'm always more than happy to, to spend time with them on the pitch or off the pitch and and just look and we all want to improve and and I want to see as many of them in the in the World Cup team as possible at the end of, at the end of our season awesome. Um, we, I think uh, Taryn, Taryn mentioned a bit about the formation. We've spoken about that a little bit already. Um, for for your, yourself and your team, um, in the back three compared to the back four, um, I guess it's something that we've seen with the, the Australian team as well, um, having a bit of a change there. What, what are the sort of um, tactical differences in having a back three to a back four? Or in your own mind, um, in terms of, I guess, um, you know, playing out from the back, possession football, is there any sort of differences there? Um, I, look, I don't think so. I think, you know, that's just um, on paper at the start of a game. You sort of put down whether you're a three or a, or a, or a four or a five, you know, so it, it depends on the mentality. So. You could set up as a three and be ultra defensive and not want the ball, or you could set up as a five and be and want to maintain possession, want to get forward. So I think at the end, it's it's um, it, it it doesn't factor too much on the formation. I think it's the the way that we go about it. So I think regardless how we set up, how we look at it, we'll still we still want the ball, we still want to attack, we still want to be on the front foot, we want to play in their half. So it doesn't matter if we're a three or a four or a five or a six, that 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 won't change. Did you have a, an update on uh, Ross Back and, um, and uh, Hannah Wilkinson? Uh, look, they're, they're, they're training well. They're sort of in and out of the group a little bit. So we're, we've got our fingers crossed that there will be, everything will be smooth sailing for the next few, hopefully couple more weeks. And then, then they should be up for, for selection as well. And, but we, we need to look after them. So there's no, we've got, we've got quality in the team and we've got people that are already performing well, so you know it's not. We don't want to rush anyone. We don't want any injuries, like I said. So once once they get the medical green light, then we'll, we'll look after them and we'll, we'll we'll slowly integrate them back into football. But like two two quality players that I think not just me, but I think the whole group's looking forward to, to joining full time back into training. That's all. And uh, just lastly, um, we've already spoken about a number of the, the young Matildas in your your squad. Um, for their time in that under 20 World Cup, um, what sort of impact do you think playing in that tournament has has had for them? Oh, it's 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 huge. You know, it's not it's not every day you get to you get to play at a World Cup. So, and it's a, it's an honour as well to play for the national team and you, you represent. You can see now with the men's team what it what it means, not just for the individual player but as a group, as a nation. So you know, I think we're we're all very proud and. And, and, and you learn a lot there when you play against three different teams and, and they were lucky enough, they had a, the home nation, so they had a massive crowd in the first game that they won. And so the, the, everything that you learn there, again, off the field as well, as, as including on the field, is just priceless for them. So now it's about building them and, and hopefully we can see them now at, at the next World Cup in, in seven, eight months time.